So I'm a professor of computing at Georgia Tech, but most of you will know me from wearable computing. Uh, I've been wearing a head of Morton display as part of my life since 1993. That's the longest such experience that I know of. Um, uh, and today I'm still wearing a head-up display. For those of you who don't know, this is something called Focals from North. It costs 600 bucks for the normal one, uh, $800 for the prescription. I highly recommend it. I have no affiliation with the company, nor I don't work for them. I'm just a fan. Um, however, today I'm talking about artificial intelligence. Very few folks realize that one of the reasons why I got into wearable computing was as a way to actually design a human-level AI. So let me tell you about why I think that's possible. So I believe that current AI has a problem. We've actually done a lot to actually get AI to the stage where it can recognize between a dog and a cat using images on the web. That's great if you want to do that for things like your social media feeds. But most of the images we upload to the web are curated, right? They are taken very carefully. And there's no way those images are going to be able to be used by a robot to navigate a room. So we getting the big data we need to actually do these neural nets, these uh, deep learning things, but we're not actually doing something that allows us to have the computers understand human experience, much less learn about the human world. So it's, it's, you might say, hey, we're starting to have systems that we can live in our home. But if you think about uh, Amazon Echo or Google Assistant in the home, it's effectively in the equivalent of time out for AIs. It's sitting in a corner looking at a blank wall uh, and mostly bored. When the agent's in your pocket, it's muffled. It's still deaf, dumb, and blind because it's not seeing anything. There's no way you expect a human infant to learn how to be intelligent by, in such a deprived environment. So why do we think our AIs will? In particular, how will our systems understand something like a handshake, much less when does it happen or what does it mean? So what I've been looking at is can we actually have AIs that are embodied, things that we actually can ha have it learn what it is to live in the human world. Now Rod Brooks, who's the former MIT AI lab director here, said the only way to true artificial intelligence is going to have a system that has the same sensory and motors that uh, humans do. Give it a human uh, a body. And he made a system called COG to do that. However, what my approach is is to give the computer my body. My students and I are putting sensors on our body that see as we see, hear as we hear, and actually look at our hands in order to figure out how we move. It even looks into our brain to see what, when we find something important or when we're paying attention to certain language structures. Now with that, my colleagues and I have managed to make some progress. For example, if you use a current AI to, to recognize a book, it's very hard because the book may have trees or cars or other things on the cover. So it's very hard to judge a book by its cover. Instead, when somebody starts using the book and paging through it, you never make that motion except with a book. And so how a person uses it, with very few bits, very little data, we know positively that, that is a book. Going further, my colleague Jim Ray and his student Ali Reza Fathi at Georgia Tech have learned how to make coffee, or rather the AI has learned how to make coffee, make a peanut butter sandwich, or make a cheese sandwich just by looking out the user's eyes and seeing from the first person view what objects you're using and how you're using them together. Going further, my student uh, Stefano Fenu and I have looked at learning sign language uh, directly. So we just have lots of video of people signing phrases and the system automatically looks for repeated phrases through time or repeated time series through time and pulls out those signs that are unique and figures out the vocabulary and even the grammar. So my name is Thad Starner. I'll be around outside. If you're interested in AI and wearables, please talk to me. I also have the North Focals and a Google Glass with me if you'd like to see what those things look like for yourself. Thank you very much. That's great.